My name is Glenn Hale and I'm a research scientist at Agriculture Victoria. Today I'll be talking about the benefits of using real-time data loggers to monitor fruit exports. So just a little bit of background about uh, the projects I've been working on, some of the real-time loggers and their specifications, deploying loggers, flight mode function and approved airlines, some results for both air and sea freight, a dashboard that we've been working on with Queensland DAF, uh, some data updates and alerts, a summary at the end, followed by some extension and acknowledgements. So for the past four years, I've been working on two temperature monitoring projects. The first one is service supply chains, and that was with Queensland DAF. They were looking at mangoes and we were looking at stone fruit and table grapes. And over that time, we've monitored over 100 air and sea freight consignments and conducted five outturn assessments, of which I've done four in China, in Shanghai and Guangzhou. And the other project was with Cherry Growers Australia, looking at uh, the cherry cool chain. And that was over two years. Uh, and in that time, we monitored about 25 air freight consignments. Most of them were through Steritech in Brisbane. And we've conducted two outturn assessments in Ho Chi Minh City. And both of the projects, the goals were to identify weak spots to help streamline the export process and ultimately improve the quality of, and reputation of Victorian growers and exporters. I've also been encouraging exporters to use new technology such as these real-time data loggers. Uh, we do have a friendly dashboard and also we've been looking at infrared refractometers and BRICS acid meters to look at fruit quality. So traditionally exporters have been using the USB loggers, the ones up in the top right there. Now they're lightweight, they're cheap and they're easy to use except they rely 100% on someone at the other end retrieving the loggers, downloading the data and sending it back. So a lot of the information isn't returned to the exporters unless if there's an issue. Uh, the logger on the left is a Bluetooth logger and very similar, I guess, to these USB loggers. However, you don't need to find them in the consignments. If someone's within 30 metres of the logger and they have the app installed on their phone, they can connect to this logger and quickly download information and then send it back to the exporter. The loggers in the middle, the accents, are very similar to a toll road, I guess, works by radio frequency. So when the logger passes the antenna uh, within 100 metres, it will download information. So I guess you could have several of these control units set up along the export supply chain to be able to track temperatures uh, along that cool chain. But the loggers on the right are the ones I want to focus on today. And these are the real time data loggers. Now they all contain SIM cards, so they work very much like a mobile phone. So the four loggers that I've been looking at in this project, amongst others, uh, Emerson, Frigga, SensorTech and Tive. Now they're all three, four and 5G loggers these days. The 2G network's been disconnected in Australia. These loggers are single use. There are um, other ones that uh, are multiple use, but you would require a closed loop or they might be good for domestic supply chains where they're easier to get back. They're roughly a little bit smaller than a mobile phone, approximately 80 mil to uh, around 100 mil, and they weigh roughly 100 to 150 grams. All these loggers have sensors for temperature, location, and light. Some of them have sensors for humidity, vibration, or shock, and even motion. And the only one that I'm aware of that has a probe on it is the Frigga logger. And there's two types, 
a one meter cable and a 15 meter cable. And I guess the one meter cable would be ideal for measuring temperatures within a carton and also outside a carton. The 15 meter cable would be ideal for measuring two positions, say in a shipping container. So if the unit was placed near the door end and the probe could be set up down the other end near the fans. There's a photo down the bottom left there that shows a probe inserted into nectarines. The probe is a little bit thick um, and not very pointy at the end. So it may not be ideal for measuring pulp temperature in smaller fruit such as table grapes. These loggers, one of the benefits of them is that they have real time alerts and you can get them via email or SMS. Another feature of these loggers is the battery life. Uh, they range from 15 days in the Emerson up to about 90 days in the Tive. Although I do know that the frigger can be extended to over 100 days. They all have their online portals, so you can access information uh, on the computer or on mobile phones or other smart devices. Uh, another feature is some of them have automatic flight mode function and others have manual flight modes. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. The temperature range is roughly minus 20 to about 70 degrees, which is more than adequate for these supply chains. And they're reasonably accurate at half a degree. All these loggers cost $75 and upwards and even over $100 in some cases. And some loggers do have reusable options. Another interesting point to note is the sensing and the reporting intervals because the lower you have these intervals set, the quicker it'll burn through the battery and potentially go flat before it reaches the destination. So that's something to keep in mind. They all report in either Excel, CSV or PDF format and that's available 24-7 soon after activating these loggers. And some of the loggers have a, a green option which is good for sustainability. So where to place these loggers? The logger manufacturers recommend that the loggers are placed at the back of the container uh, on top of the last pallet and that's because that's the best place for reception. Uh, we've been placing the loggers inside the top carton in the last pallet and we've been receiving some good results and it's a bit more realistic to monitor the ambient temperatures that the fruit is actually within. So after deploying these loggers it's just a matter of logging into uh, a dashboard entering your email and password, and then you can go and set up the device and add any activation codes that uh, might be required, such as the Frigger logger. And then you can create a shipment and set up temperature and location alerts, which is very handy. And you can set up notifications for email and text or even mobile push messages. Flight mode function is automatic or manual and the Emerson logger has a geofence that's set up around a lot of the airports so that when the logger passes through this geofence it will automatically go into flight mode and the Tive and the Emerson also have an accelerometer which when the plane takes off or lands the accelerometer detects rapid changes in speed and height and will automatically go into flight mode function. The frigger logger there on the right uh, is a you need to manually enter uh, flight mode. So you just need to go into the device settings, enter an airport, and then it'll automatically set up a 5k radius around the airport. So when the logger passes into this area it will go into flight mode and then all you have to do is add down the bottom roughly how long you will require the logger to be in flight mode 
uh, to cover the flight uh, and loading also at the start. Airline approvals, the TIVE has the most at over 50 airline approvals and the Emerson has approximately 30. So here's an example of a delayed cooling trial where we were monitoring the temperatures from Mildura all the way to Malaysia. The temperature graphs on the left and the map at the top right is what you would see on the dashboard. And then the two graphs down the bottom right is what you would see on a mobile phone through their app. The top graph is uh, product temperature and the bottom graph on the left is air temperature, so outside the carton. And you can see a nice smooth graph there. Uh, and we've set up temperature thresholds at three degrees and zero degrees. And for majority of the trip to KL, you can see that the temperatures are within that zone. The graph down the bottom, there's more temperature fluctuations because I guess you're measuring the airflow of the air within the container. And the total trip time was about five weeks. Uh, there was a, a roughly a week's delay uh, in Mildura while this consignment was merged with another commercial consignment because we only had several boxes of fruit for this trial. With the, the map at the top right there, these little circles represent uh, mobile updates and there's some good information observed along the way uh, around the base of Western Australia and up through Indonesia uh, to Singapore and then Malaysia. This slide shows another temperature profile for sea freight of stone fruit to China. Uh, the temperature thresholds were set at minus one and five degrees. And very good cool chain for majority of the trip until it was at the uh, importer in Hong Kong, I believe. And then it was trucked up to Shanghai. You can see some very good updates along the coast of Australia uh, into Hong Kong and then through, I guess, Guangzhou up to Shanghai. The middle graph here is a light sensor, and you can see that uh, when the logger was put into the carton, it's obviously picked up some light, and then also at the other end when the importers opened the carton. And that matches up with the graph at the bottom showing the shock function as well. The two graphs in the middle in the orange uh, is from the Frigga app. You just need to select all and then toggle on the temperature, humidity, light and shock to quickly see what these uh, sensors are doing on your mobile phone. This slide shows air freight of table grapes to Vietnam back in February. Uh, Stereotech helped put the loggers in for us. Uh, just after radiation of the fruit. This one, this consignment went to Vietnam, to Hanoi, and you can see uh, the fruit was treated down here in Melbourne and then transported by road up to Sydney. Um, I guess there was some restrictions in flights leaving Melbourne, so it was trucked up to Sydney and then the flight to Hanoi. And that's where you can see these temperature profiles increasing. It's not uncommon for them to go up to approximately 15 degrees. The total trip time here is roughly five days. And you can see that half of that time it was spent at the freight forwarder, I guess looking for a flight to get it to Vietnam. Here's a dashboard that uh, Queensland DAF um, have been working on uh, in conjunction with some exporters and developers. And if we open up the dashboard, this is what we would see. Down the left hand side, we've got uh, pages for dashboard, any archived loggers, uh, managing the device, managing shipments. Uh, we do have a, a shelf life calculator that can predict 
remaining shelf life in particular for mangoes. We're currently working on one for stone fruit. And then the last uh, page is the default settings page. So on this dashboard, we can see the consignment ID, the type of fruit or vegetable that uh, we're dealing with, the origin and the destination. We do have the API for several loggers. So we can uh, just visually see all this information on one dashboard rather than going to multiple dashboards. We have the logger ID there and when it was last recorded and the location. The alert severity, the colors there represent whether they're within or have gone outside threshold parameters. And we can link a QR code to these loggers and to the consignment as well, which is good for traceability. Now, if I was to click on the show icon there for this third one, it will come up with a screen like this with the logger number, the position of the logger within the container. Uh, for status, this is to do with the location alerts that we have set up. Uh, we don't have any here uh, other than this one, and that was when it arrived. This is a, a table grape consignment that went to Indonesia um, the middle of last year. And we have a temperature profile here with the threshold set at minus one and four degrees, I believe. Uh, very good uh, cool chain. Uh, for the entire trip. This spike at the end is when the importer has removed the logger. If we were to ho uh, hover uh, the cursor over the temperature graph, we'll be able to see the date, the time and the temperature. And this consignment uh, has taken about four weeks to arrive at the destination market. And here's a map of the route. You can see these temperature updates with these red dots here, uh, tracking the, the ship around clockwise around Australia, around the bottom of Western Australia, up through Indonesia, uh, into Malaysia, and then back down to Singapore, and then finally down to uh, Sarabaya in Indonesia. And here's a closer look at uh, where the temperature updates were occurring. Uh, some more info on data updates is for the same consignment we did put in, uh, we had Frigga and Tide loggers in here. Um, and occasionally some of them uh, don't update as often as we would like. And so you see these straight lines between points A and B. Uh, and the Frigga logger has updated several times to Adelaide and then around the bottom of Western Australia through Indonesia up to Singapore and Malaysia. I guess it depends sometimes what position the shipping container is on the ship. If it's on the right side in this example, there may be a chance that it can find mobile phone towers and update along with the route. If not, you'll only receive information when it does update, which could be at the other end. The ship's gone from Melbourne up to Sydney and Brisbane where we've received uh, temperature updates and then there's been nothing over Northern Australia uh, and no updates until Singapore and eventually in Thailand. But you can see roughly 25 days for this uh, palm fruit to arrive in Thailand. Uh, very good cool chain below the temperature thresholds we set at three degrees here. Uh, some more information about art data updates. Um, you can see lots of updates along the coast of Australia and around northern Australia, uh, all the way through Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, uh, through the Suez Canal, uh, some updates below Greece. And then the, the last update was at the base of Italy. Unfortunately, the uh, exporter uh, didn't inform me of this logger and the battery has run out uh, after 49 days uh, on its voyage to the UK. But you can see some minor temperature fluctuations along the trip. Uh, it spent roughly several days in Singapore, I guess being transshipped 
and that's where there's a few temperature spikes there. Uh, one of the benefits of using these real-time loggers is the alert functions that you can set up on them. And this is a, an Apple consignment that was on the way to the UK uh, middle of last year. Um, we had temperature thresholds set at minus one and three degrees. And you can see that uh, the temperature did increase above that. And I did receive uh, an alert uh, on my mobile phone. I then contacted the exporter who then contacted the shipping company who then went and had a look to see uh, what was wrong. And uh, you can see they've fixed the problem and the temperatures have started to decrease back down within the set limits. Uh, so that's one uh, positive uh, outcome, I guess, of using these loggers. Who knows what the fruit would have looked like if it had have spent another three or four weeks uh, above 10 degrees. So just a summary of real-time loggers. The benefits of using them is that you can monitor pulp temperatures, also carton positions within shipping containers, uh, and also you can measure ambient temperatures within the container. Uh, the monitoring is in real time, provided that loggers are started early. We do recommend starting them one to two hours before placing them in any consignments, just so that they can connect with the network. And then there's more chance of receiving uh, temperature updates or location alerts en route. Another benefit is you have full access to all of the data. Uh, pretty much 24 seven right from the start of uh, when they are activated. So you're not relying on anyone else to collect loggers, download information and send it back to you. The data is literally at your fingertips because it only takes a few seconds to log on to uh, an app on your phone and uh, you can see what's happening with consignment temperatures and locations. We have developed a universal dashboard that is user-friendly uh, and we can stream multiple devices from different branded loggers into our dashboard. Uh, and we have integrated the temperature with quality outturn so that we can predict shelf life for mangoes and also stone fruit. Uh, some loggers are more suitable for different modes of transport, for road, for sea and for air. Uh, those flight mode uh, functions are very handy. The entire supply chain is more visible and I believe it makes all of the links more accountable. Uh, and we can program uh, alerts for temperature and location um, so that if uh, they do go outside of set limits, then you can uh, potentially do something about it before the consignment uh, arrives at the final destination. Some of the challenges of using these loggers is that uh, the signal may be compromised. If the logger is in a container that's in the middle of a ship somewhere, well then you, there, the, you may not receive any information until uh, the container is unloaded at the other end. Uh, there is a uh, a manual programming for flight mode, which can be a little bit tricky or time consuming um, and no updates during air freight because of flight mode and also sea freight with, because there's no towers in the middle of the ocean. These loggers do come at higher unit costs compared to USB loggers and there are minimum orders and uh, postage can be a bit expensive from America. Uh, some of the exporters have mentioned to me that they've accidentally started these loggers. They do have a button on the face uh, which can be accidentally pushed. Uh, so it's important to handle them with care. Uh, and it does take a little bit of time to program loggers in the dashboard. Uh, obviously, the, the more you do, the quicker you get at it or you can also have uh, information sort of pre-programmed that's uh, easy to input into these dashboards to speed up the process. Uh, with some of the dashboards, the data is only archived for only several months, so you would need to access the information before then. 
Uh, you can still get it afterwards uh, by contacting the support teams, but it may not be in the format uh, that uh, is easy to see, like what's on the dashboards. And one other negative, I guess, of the real-time loggers is the shelf life of the batteries. They last roughly uh, three to 12 months. So um, if you're not gonna use them within that time, well, then there's probably no point uh, ordering hundreds of them um, because they will be flat uh, by the time you go to use them. Some of the loggers can be recharged, which is a handy feature. Just uh, some extension or uh, technology transfer that we've done in these projects. We have written several industry articles uh, in the Vine magazine. Uh, the top one there is real time uh, temp loggers tell the story. And we do have a new article coming out in the Vine. Uh, it's in press at the moment. There's another article there in the middle for across borders, keeping your temperature monitoring real. The article down the bottom uh, in good fruit and veggies is uh, export of Victorian cherries to be live tracked this season. And then on the right hand side, there's another article on cherries in flesh, fresh plaza. All of this information is available on the HIN or the Horticultural Industry Network webpage. And there's also some available on Cherry Growers Australia's webpage. Uh, we have done several social and media releases on Facebook uh, over the time. And we have done a, a stone fruit roadshow to Renmark, Mildura and Swan Hill a couple of years ago. Planning on going this year, but due to COVID, it may have to go online have done some radio and TV interviews uh, with a couple of um, radio stations and presented information at science conferences and webinars and also trained some staff overseas uh, and also connected with some logger companies whilst overseas. So just to conclude and finish up, um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, EDIS or Ag Policy Group within Agriculture Victoria for funding the Cherry Project. Also QDAF for running the Service Supply Chains Project. I'd also like to thank Cherry Growers Australia and Steritech for their help and also the logger companies. And once again, a lot of the information is available on the HIN website with a the link there.